Well, these two um, uh, clinical trials um, and, and treatment modalities are relating to increasing production of SMN protein uh, through modulating SMN2 gene. Uh, there have been other approaches. Um, Liz, I know that you um, have some experience um, as well with the trials um, using gene transfer mm -hmm. for treatment of SMA. Yeah, so the current gene therapy that's being developed is AVXS101 um, or Onisemnagene. Uh, and so it's quite exciting, the application's currently in being reviewed by the FDA, and so we anticipate an answer shortly. Um, so this is a gene, a gene transfer strategy using the adeno-associated virus 9, um, which is one that's kind of commonly being used in current gene therapy trials. Um, and so the adeno-associated virus doesn't cause any human illness at all, and really they've taken out all of the parts of the viral uh, genome that would replicate and really replaced it with a normal functioning copy of the SMN gene. Uh, it is a virus that doesn't integrate its DNA into the human genome, uh, so we shouldn't run into issues that arose in earlier clinical trials, you know, from decades ago where there was an increased cancer risk with certain gene therapies, uh, but rather the viral capsid just kind of sits there in the cell. Um, but can continually express SMN. The choice of the virus is a really important thing when you're talking about gene therapies because every virus has particular cells that it likes to infect. Uh, and so AAV9 was picked in particular because it likes both neurons and astrocytes, although it's important to note that it will kind of go throughout the body um, as well. And in particular, liver and muscle and other tissues will also kind of get certain levels of viral expression uh, moving forward. So really the initial study to look at both its safety and efficacy was a phase one trial that was published back in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2017. And so the initial study was of 15 patients. Uh, the first three patients received a lower dose, really to look for kind of basic safety. Um, and the next 12 received a higher dose where it was kind of clear that there was better efficacy as well. And so a lot of the outcomes that they looked at had significant overlap with things that you've already heard about. Uh, so the CHOP intent had significant improvement um, and really improved kind of quite rapidly over the first several months following infusion. Uh, in addition, none of the patients required any uh, full-time ventilatory support. None of the patients died during the trial. All of these things that in the untreated SMA type 1 population we would have anticipated to kind of see during that. Um, you know, they've also looked a lot at some of the feeding and the bulbar involvement and speech, and we're also seeing that those outcomes are also really kind of continuing to improve. Um, and two out of the 12 who were treated in the high dose group have walked independently. So a very drastic change from where we would otherwise anticipate these patients to be. So on the basis of that, they really kind of have moved forward. Uh, there's a larger phase three clinical trial, also of type one patients uh, that's being done. Um, and it's important for me to kind of backtrack a little bit and note that in these phase one patients, they are giving the medication intravenously. Um, so you are really, the virus can freely cross the blood brain barrier. We don't run into those issues that we kind of get with nusinersen. So it is a one-time intravenous injection. Then the virus just kind of, the viral capsid just sits there and will continue to express the protein. Um, they're also doing a study in older patients, in type 2 patients, where they're administering the drug intrathecally to really kind of maximize getting more of the medication, more of the virus to the motor neurons where it's most necessary. Uh, and so really it's an exciting area, kind of anticipating where things will go. Um, it definitely has some benefits in the fact that it's a one-time infusion. Um, although it does require a lot of safety monitoring afterwards, um, particularly looking for any liver toxicity, which is the main thing to kind of monitor for um, in the period after infusion. So even though it is administered intravenously and it diffuses throughout the body, it only remains in non-replicating cells. So rapid replicating cells will lose that 
um, vector genome, um, but it does stay in muscle quite a bit of time from what I understand because that doesn't replicate as quickly. The age of, the mean age of treatment of these babies? Was about three and a half months. So quite young. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. There, is, there is a trial ongoing with older children, is that mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. And, and, but it's too early to, that, that's still, um, only very preliminary data has kind of been released at this point.